Hey guys, welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies, and today I'm going to be going over how to create this flyer in GIMP. This is version 2.9.8. It's the most recent version of GIMP. Um, it contains basically all the new features GIMP 2.10 is going to have, but there's still some bug fixes they're working on. It's a more stable version, especially compared to GIMP version 2.9.6. Uh, but you can follow along this tutorial with version 2.8.22 or, uh, you know, one of the older versions of GIMP. And this was an older tutorial I did back in 2012, I believe, and I just feel like this needs an update. Um, graphic styles have changed over the years, and there's some new features in GIMP that can make your flyers look a little better. So um, we're doing a half-page flyer, 8.5 uh, by 5.5 inches. You can do a quarter-page flyer, a full page. You can do a poster, 11 by 17 whatever size you want to do, but just for today, we're going to do eight and a half by five and a half. So before I get started, I just want to direct you guys to my website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. You can uh, see some of our video tutorials on here, some of our text tutorials. You can also take our GIMP online photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Davies Media D-E-S and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash daviesmediadesign. Now the images we're going to be using today are going to be from Pixabay. They are free to download. Uh, this one is like a laser light show and this one is a model. And I'm also using these GIMP splatter brushes here and if you don't know how to install a brush I have a tutorial on my website so definitely check that out. I'll put a link in the description of course. So we'll go ahead and get started and we're going to start by creating a new composition. We'll go to file new and I'll change this to inches and eight and a half by five and a half is the dimensions we want. And so now that I have this new composition, what I want to do is grab my blend tool and I'm going to create a gradient background here. So I'm going to click on the foreground color and I've already got some pre-selected colors here. So I've got like a, a pink color and then I've got a darker pink color, um, dark red, almost like a black color here. And so I'm going to go ahead and change the gradient type to foreground to background and make sure that the shape is set to linear. And then I'm going to click and drag and hold control while I do that. And that's going to ensure that the gradient is drawn in a straight line here. GIMP now has live gradient editing features in GIMP uh, 2.9.8. So you can click and drag this after the fact or you can change the colors if you want to change the shape. But I'm fine with this right now, so I'm just going to grab the Move tool and that'll apply our blend there. So this is the photo of the model we'll be using today. And what I need to do is erase the background here. So before I start on that, I'm just going to go ahead and crop this with my Crop tool. So I grab my Crop tool over here, clicked and dragged, and double click, and that'll apply the crop. And once I've done that, now I need to add transparency to this so that when I erase the background, there's going to be a transparency behind the image versus like a foreground or a background color. So I'll go ahead and right click on my main layer and go to add alpha channel and that'll add that transparency behind here. Then I want to right click again and go to add layer mask and make sure this is set to white full opacity and click add. And then I'll grab my paintbrush here and change my color to black and change my brush to a soft brush here. And you can increase or decrease the brush size using the brackets on your keyboard. And you just want to go through and erase this background here. And you're going to do that until um, you've erased all around your subject. And obviously, the uh, better of a job you do at this, the better the final product is going to look. And what I like to do is add a layer to this, uh, name it background, place this below the main image that you're editing and then just add a sort of darker color behind here. Like I'll put a dark blue and that makes it easier to see spots that you've missed while you're erasing. So I've already of course uh, completed right here erasing a background and if you want you can grab your tool, your uh, brush tool and just kind of make sure that you've hit all your spots on here and once this is ready to go we can go ahead and hide our background layer, then go to edit, copy visible, and then we come over here to our composition we're working on and control V or edit paste, and that's gonna paste this as a floating selection. Then go ahead and click the add new layer icon. And by the way, my layers panel, my layers channels pass panel is down here. Sometimes it's up here. And uh, sometimes the brushes panel is down here. So sometimes they get switched up, especially in this new version. 
Now what I want to do is go to layer, scale layer, because we're going to increase the size of this, and I'll go with 120 for now. I've got this lock icon locked, which means these are going to um, scale together. They're going to scale in unison, and I have the unit here set to percent, and then I'll just click scale. And then I'll grab my move tool and move our model up here. And then I can grab my align tool and click on the model and uh, align to center of target. And that's just going to make sure that this is um, in the center of our image here. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to create this little wavy feature we have here. And uh, to do that, I'm going to go ahead and grab my paths tool. And I'm going to create a new layer. And we'll name this wavy feature. And you can set a color tag. And this is a new feature in GIMP 2.9.8. And so now we're going to draw our wavy shape and we can uh, overlap our model here a little bit because we're going to take care of that later. And so I'm clicking to create a point and then I'm dragging. So I click and hold and drag to make this a curved point. So click and drag. I don't really need to do it here because it's already um, countering the wave I created up here. And you can of course move these points if you need to. And then go ahead and create a round here. Just make sure that these points are outside of our composition here because this isn't going to matter. It's going to be outside anyway. Make sure you're on your wavy feature layer and go to selection from path and that'll create a selection area. So now grab your blend tool and make sure that your background colors are set to like a black and then you can click black again and drag this value over a little bit so that it lightens the black. You can see um, this value has, it goes from black to white, which means you add black as you drag it to the right. And that's going to create a slightly uh, lighter black or like a dark gray. And we'll make sure this is set to linear still. And then we'll go ahead and click and drag and hold control. So we have a straight gradient and we're just dragging this a little bit outside the composition here. Then we'll grab the move tool to solidify that blend. Go to select none. And then grab our wavy feature here. And you can just decrease the opacity of this a little bit because we don't want this to be full opacity. I'm just going to grab my zoom tool and zoom in a little bit. And now what I want to do is uh, grab my model here, right click, and then go to add layer mask. And make sure this initialize layer mask 2 is set to white. And then we'll click OK. And now what I want to do is grab my uh, rectangle select tool. Make sure the mode is set to replace the current selection and then click and drag this. And then we're going to take our gradient tool here, make sure it's set to black and then change the gradient to foreground to transparent. And then we're going to start right here where the image starts, hold control. And then we want to end it wherever we want the fade to end because uh, this gradient is black and this um, layer mask is white, which means every time we paint the color black inside this layer mask, it's erasing wherever the black is and uh, keeping wherever the white still is. So this is causing this to fade out into the background, which creates a cool effect there. And now you can't see that she's got like her legs cut off in this photo. So we'll go to select none. And I did hit that uh, move tool after I created the gradient to solidify that gradient. And then I hit select none. And now what we want to do is go ahead and color correct this. So we'll go ahead and go to colors, color balance. And I've already got my settings that I want here because I did this earlier, but basically I clicked and dragged these values. And if you drag this one to the right, for instance, it's going to add blue. If you drag this to the left, like I did here, it adds magenta. And same here, if you drag this to the left, which is how you get a negative value, you get more cyan than red. So I did that for the midtones, and then for the shadows, I added some red. I um, added some magenta, added some blue. And then for the highlights, I added some red. Um, added some magenta and added some blue here. And you can hit the split view here to kind of preview uh, before and after. So this is after, this is before, and you can move this preview area so that you can see um, what your subject looks like before you apply your effects. And I'll click OK. And this just adds a little bit of purple tone to our model so that she blends in with some of the purple and pink going on here. All right, so now what I'm going to do is add a neon effect uh, to this main model layer. And to do that, I'm going to duplicate our model layer, which I'm going to double click on the original and name it model. And then double click on this new one we just created and name it neon model. And so I'm going to come over here to filters. 
edge detect, and then neon. And I've already got the settings here that I want, but you want to crank the intensity up a little bit below one, so you're at 0.92, and then the radius I have it around five, and this will take a little while to uh, generate a preview. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK to apply that neon. And after I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and change the mode to linear light. And then I'm going to just decrease this opacity and because I only want it to lightly show up here in our model. And then I want to go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and just apply a little bit of the blur here. Not too much and not too little at the same time. And then, so I've got this around 8.88. Click OK. And then you can adjust the opacity a little bit on here and you can see it before and after if you click the show hide icon right here on that layer. So you can see that she glows a little bit now. All right, the next thing I want to do is create some paint splatters behind her just to kind of make this composition a little bit more dynamic. So to do that, I'll create a new layer and name this paint splatter. And you can add a color coding to this. I'll put green on it. And now what we're going to do, so I'll grab my paintbrush tool here and you'll need to download the brushes um, via the link that's in the description. And again, if you don't know how to download brushes in GIMP, uh, definitely check out our blog to see how to do that. But once you have the brushes, you can click the Refresh Brushes button here, and that'll uh, generate all the new brushes that you just uh, dragged into your brushes folder in GIMP. And these are my paint splatter brushes here. And what I want to do is choose um, one of these to start. I'm going to paint with all of these just because we want this, again, to be a little bit more dynamic. And I'm going to come over here and change the foreground color to white. And then I want to increase my brush size and then I'll start painting behind here some of the paint splatters. And again, I'm just changing my brush as we go because I want the paint splatters to be varying in shape and size. And I don't want the paint splatters to go too far outside of the model here because I don't want it to be uh, too noticeable. All right, so once we have this looking how we want, um, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take these splatters and basically create a gradient out of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're on our paint splatter layer. Then we're going to go to Layer, Transparency, Alpha to Selection. And that's going to select all of our paint splatter. Then we're going to add a new layer and go to Paint Splatter Gradient. And... We'll keep this at green so that we know that these two are related. And we're going to grab our gradient tool and we'll choose um, some colors similar to our background um, color, but we don't want it to be the exact same because we do want it to stand out a little bit. So we'll test this out at first and see how the colors look against the uh, background. And you can, again, uh, go ahead and change your gradient to foreground to background. Um, so those are a little too similar, so I'm going to go ahead and lighten this up a little bit. And you can see I can live edit here in the new GIMP. Click OK. And then this one, I'm just going to play around with the colors here. We don't want it to be too dark. Click OK. And you can also change the shape if you want, just to test it out. Here's the radial gradient, which you can drag. But I think we do want this to be a little bit lighter. We want it to stand out a little more. So we don't want it to look too gray either. There we go. Click OK. Then I'll grab my Move tool to solidify that. Go to Select None. And then you can hide your original paint layer. And then take this layer and bring the opacity down a little bit. And now that kind of blends into the background a little bit. And if you prefer to just have the white paint splatter, you can always um, unhide that. Or if you want to sort of highlight the uh, gradient paint splatter we just created, you can unhide your white paint splatter and just decrease the opacity a bit until you get the look you want. So I like the way that looks right there. And the next thing I want to do is bring in our laser light show here. 
So I'll hit Control C on my keyboard, and then I'll come back over here and hit Control V. And now we've got a floating selection layer with that background there. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Create a New Layer icon and make sure that this is moved all the way to the back. But we do want to scale this layer. So I'm going to go to Layer, Scale Layer, and we'll go with 150% and click Scale. Then I'll grab my Move tool and move this up a little bit. So I do want this so that uh, some, of the, some of the more crazy elements happening here are behind the model here. So it kind of looks like the rays are emanating from the model. I'm going to move this over as much as I can. And so obviously this black is annoying, but instead of having to sit here and you know, erase all the black, what I can do is go to the mode and choose screen. And that's going to get rid of all the black for me. And now what I want to do is I don't want these, all these colors because it kind of throws off the color of the composition. So I'll go over to colors, hue saturation, and make sure you're on the master setting here. And go ahead and just crank the saturation all the way down. And that's going to change these colors to basically just white. Click OK. And that to me blends better with the composition. Now an issue you'll notice is that there's a hard stop right here where this, um, this image basically, because it's not as large, it's not as long as the original composition, it just kind of stops at an edge here. So we're going to do what we did to the model and we're going to right click and go to add layer mask. Make sure that this is set to white full opacity and click add. Then we're going to um, grab our rectangular select tool. And this is kind of optional for this area because it doesn't really matter if we cut off too much of the uh, lights to a certain de degree. And then I'm going to click on my foreground color and choose black and click OK. Make sure the gradient type is set to foreground to transparent and that the shape is set to linear. And then I'm going to click and drag and again hold control while I do that. And make sure that the start of your gradient is wherever you want the um, laser lights to fade out and that looks good to me so I'm going to grab the move tool to solidify that select none and then if we come over to the background layer now you can see these lasers fade out nice and easy alright so now what I want to do is add my text and to do that I'm going to come over to my text tool and I'm going to have my font set to Nexa bold and I'm going to go ahead and just type and I have caps lock on and this is going to say nightlife and then we do want to increase this because this is our main text. So we'll go to about 288. Then I'll grab my alignment tool and just go ahead and align this. Make sure you click on the text layer. Um, I'm actually going to move this to the top of the layers panel and then click on the text layer and align it. And then you can kind of use your move tool and hold control to drag it up in a straight line. And now I'm going to grab my text tool again and I'm going to change this color to a white for now. And the next thing I want to do is in my original composition here I added kind of a little um, part here to the end. I kind of customized the font a little bit. So uh, the way I did that was I just created a new layer. Make sure you're clicked on this nightlife layer. Create a new layer and we'll name this nightlife and abbreviate customization and we can make this yellow in color and now what I'm going to do grab my zoom tool and zoom in on the end here here grab my rectangle select tool and just go ahead and draw this so that it aligns with the uh, top of the end but that it's also the same thickness approximately as the uh, lettering here so I'm going to change this to white and grab my bucket fill tool and go ahead and fill that in. Go to select none. And now we have like a cool little customization of the end there. Grab my zoom tool, hold control to zoom out. And now what I'm going to do is uh, right click on this customization we made and just merge it down so that now um, it's part of that text that we just made. And you want to save that step for when you know that this is the text you want and uh, you don't need to make any more adjustments to it. So now I'm going to come over here to Layer, Transparency, Alpha to Selection. We'll go ahead and shrink this. And I'm going to change the unit here to Pixels. And I just want to shrink this by one pixel for now. And click OK. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the bucket fill tool to fill this in with our uh, bright pink we wanna use. Uh, I'm actually going to create a new layer here and go to nightlife overlay. Make sure this is yellow so, uh, so that we know it belongs to the text group here. So now that we have the nightlife overlay, we'll go ahead and fill that in. And then we'll go ahead and select, shrink this by, and we'll change this to pixels again. We'll shrink this by 10 this time. Let's see if that's too much. Uh, it's actually not enough. So we'll go ahead and select, shrink it by an additional five pixels. Okay. And then I'm gonna change this to nightlife highlight. Change the color to gold or uh, yellow. And make sure that this is above our nightlife overlay text layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in with white. Select none. And then I'm going to uh, make sure that that layer is still selected and you can go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're just gonna blur that layer a little bit and maybe turn it down a smidgen. Okay. So now what we wanna do is duplicate this nightlife overlay layer. We're gonna name this nightlife glow. And we're gonna drag it down below the nightlife uh, main text layer here. And we're gonna again apply a Gaussian blur. So blur, Gaussian blur. And we're just gonna turn the blur up a little bit so that um, it's more pronounced, the glow is more pronounced here. And then we'll click OK. So now we've got this nightlife text and it kind of looks uh, like it's almost like a neon. And now what we wanna do is kind of put the supporting text or the subtitle text around here. And so uh, in our original composition, I put enjoy the nightlife. And so I'm gonna come over here to our uh, new composition and go ahead and just click on the artboard and keep my caps lock on and I'm gonna type enjoy the here and select the text and if it's not already set to next light, go ahead and select next light as your font. And then I want to decrease this to about 116 here. And then I do wanna increase the kerning and so I'm just gonna click on this right here, grab my move tool and we wanna move this so that it's up here now and then move it over a little bit, make sure you're clicking on the text, otherwise you'll accidentally move the background. And so next I'm gonna grab the text tool again and type the uh, date that this nightclub is promoting. So Saturday, July, I just made a date up, I'll put 25th. Highlight this and decrease this so that it's about the same size as the enjoy the font here. And by the way, um, if GIMP 2.9.8 glitches on you when you try to decrease the font, um, you can just undo it and then come over here and decrease the font over here. Sometimes that's what it takes to uh, decrease the font. So now I'm gonna highlight the month here and go ahead and bold that text and then grab the color here and change it to that pink we've been using. And this font's actually a little too big for me so I'm gonna go ahead and decrease the size a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab my alignment tool, click on that text we created and you might have to drag this to the top to be able to properly click on it. And then go ahead and align it to the center of the composition. Okay, before we add any more text, I do want to create a uh, sort of reflection here. So I'm gonna grab my Nightlife main layer and duplicate it, and then change the name of this to Reflection. Hit Enter. And I'll go ahead and hide the uh, overlay layers here so I don't accidentally move them. And then grab my move tool and go ahead and move that new layer we just created down a little bit. And then grab my flip tool here and change the direction to vertical and go ahead and flip it. And then grab my move tool again and I'm just gonna have to move this down again and hold control to move it down in a straight line. And you wanna move it so that it's just underneath here so it looks like a reflection. And we're going to apply that same effect that we did on our model layer. And we're going to um, grab the rectangle select tool, select this area, grab my blend tool here, and then come over to our layer, right click on it, go to add layer mask and white full opacity. 
And then we're going to, once again, grab our blend tool, change the color to black, and make sure this is still set to foreground to transparent. And then click and drag, hold control while you drag to keep it in a straight line. And then drag the start of this to wherever you want this text to be faded out at. And you can also adjust where the uh, transparency or where the black starts to fade into transparency there by clicking and dragging this point. Drag it a little more. Then you can grab your move tool to solidify that gradient. Go to select none. And then make sure, click on this uh, nightlife layer and you can go ahead and decrease the opacity so it's not um, quite so prevalent here. And then go ahead and unhide these top layers here. And so now we have a nice reflection there. And you can also um, do this reflection with the pink text layer if you want the reflection to be a pink color. I'm just using the white because it's a little easier to see. And now we know how much room we have to work with so I can move this text up a little bit. Now what I want to do is grab my rectangle select tool and then create a new layer and we'll name this rectangle. And we'll give it a new color. So we'll give it a uh, orange color. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a rectangle here. And actually I want to be able to know if I'm in the uh, center of the image. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my rulers tool here. And you can see actually in the bottom corner um, where that ruler is located. And if you're set to pixels right now, you can change it to inches. And we know this is eight and a half by five and a half. And so 2.75 is the midway point here. So I'm just looking at that bottom number until I get to 2.75 and then release. And then grab my rectangle tool. And if you click on it, you can select it again and then just move it so that it is um, center aligned. And you can click and drag the edges of this to increase or decrease the size. Grab my bucket fill tool. I'll keep black as the color and go ahead and make sure you're on that rectangle layer and fill that rectangle in. Go to select none. Uh, we want this rectangle to have a sort of neon glow to it as well. So what we'll do this time is we'll go to filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. And I've already got my settings here to how I want them, but I've got the X and Y set to about 3.951. And then blur radius, I pulled up to about 20, a little over 20. And I changed the color. I clicked on this and changed it to the pink we've been using. And then I've got the opacity to a little under 70%. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, our rectangle has this outer glow to it now. So now we're going to add our sort of informative text here. And I can use the Move tool to click and drag this out of the way. And so I'm going to grab my text tool. I'm going to change the font to 50. And I'm going to go ahead and click on our, our composition here. And I'm in caps lock again. So doors open at 7 PM. And I'm actually going to highlight this and change the color to white. And actually, I forgot about the tickets here. So tickets, $20. And I added a line here. So we'll go ahead and change that to white again. And then add another line. So I'm shift and hitting the forward slash key on my keyboard to add that line, 18 plus. And then I actually want to spread these uh, letters out a little bit. So I'm going to highlight the text and then increase the kerning. And I might have to adjust this kerning again once I align this. So I'm going to grab my move tool. Make sure you're clicking on the text itself. And OK, so I'll see if I can get away with adding one more value to the kerning. So I'll highlight it, increase it to five, grab my alignment tool, click on our text and just hit align to center of target. And that looks pretty good to me. And now I'm just going to add the website at the bottom and this is a totally made up website and nightlife.club. Go ahead and highlight that, change the font to Nexa bold and change the color to white. And then I'll increase this a little bit. And the reason it's kind of gray right now is because it's below um, some layers. So I'm just going to pull this at least above the uh, wavy feature layer. And then grab my move tool here and click on the text and move it up a little bit. And then grab your alignment tool, click on that text. And you might have to move this up a few layers. Click on that text again and then align to center. 
And we're almost done here, so the last two things we're gonna do is add a vignette and then add a lens flare. So um, this vignette, it's a new feature to GIMP, so I'm gonna um, give this a new color. And I want the vignette to be at the very top of my layers panel. So I'm gonna click and drag the layer to the top. And so now they have a vignette uh, filter on here. So I can go to filters, light and shadow, vignette. And this is going to generate a vignette around your image. I think this is a really cool new feature in GIMP. And um, I've already got the settings to how I want, but you can kind of adjust the settings here. The radius is basically how far out the gradient goes. So if the radius is lower, then it's gonna start closer to the center of your image. And if it's higher, it's gonna start further out. So you just wanna adjust that until you get the uh, style you want. So the softness is basically like how fast the uh, vignette fades out. And uh, so if you increase the softness, you can see it's slower to fade out and uh, takes up more of your composition. And if you decrease the softness, it fades out a little quicker. And I've got my proportion cranked up to one here. And then squeeze is how narrow is this gradient. And so I adjusted the squeeze so that the corners kind of perfectly overlap with the corner of my image. And then the center, of course, is where the center of the vignette starts. And if your center X and Y are off center, then your, great, your uh, vignette is gonna be off center. And then rotation is you know, whether or not this thing is at an angle, and I don't want it at an angle, so I'm just gonna set it to zero. And then I'll click OK. And there's actually one other feature that I almost forgot about as well. And that is I want her to glow like sort of pink um, where you can see the, the highlights here on her skin. And that way she kind of blends a little better with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, create a new layer and name this pink glow. And I'm just gonna choose a, a red color here, just a random color and pull this to the very top so it's above all of the other uh, model layers. And what I'm gonna do is grab my paintbrush tool, change the color to one of these pink colors we've been uh, using, and then change the paintbrush to like a softer brush. Then I'm going to go ahead and you can increase or decrease the size of your brush with the bracket keys. But I'm just gonna paint wherever I see sort of like light coming through or basically areas where we um, kind of missed erasing the background. I'm just gonna draw over that with um, this color and this doesn't have to be exact and again only really doing this areas where we see kind of light or highlighted areas and I'm not going to get too crazy with this but we can also go here and go to filters blur Gaussian blur and we can increase this blur a little bit if we need to. But as you can see, you can already start to see that this is creating like a, like a pink highlight sort of effect here. And then we'll go ahead and click OK once we have that where we want it. And then we're going to grab that pink glow layer and just turn down the opacity a little bit so it's not too intense. And now our model kind of has that pink glow going on on the outer edges there. All right, once we've done that, the last thing we're gonna do, and this is uh, kind of optional, I guess, we're going to add a lens flare here. And so to do that, I'm gonna go to Filters, Light and Shadow, Lens Flare. And I've already got the positions um, set pretty close to where I want them, but basically your X and Y position are where this uh, lens flare is gonna be located on your image. And so if you drag the Y position that's gonna move um, this lens flare up or down. And if you drag the X position, it'll move it left or right. So I just wanna drag this so that the lens flare kind of aligns with our E here, but I don't want it too far below it. And that looks good enough for me, so I'll hit okay. All right, and now we have our flyer. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. We're putting out new tutorials every Tuesday and Thursday. You can also follow us on Twitter at Davies Media DES and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Davies Media Design. And of course, you can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And I'll put that link in the description. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.